My name is Brandon Weed. I'm a film student at Wilmington University. I'm in my last semester before I graduate with my bachelor's in digital filmmaking. I live about as normal a life as anyone else, but I consider myself lucky to be here. I say I'm lucky to be alive because I am a cancer survivor. I'm a survivor of a cancer called retinoblastoma, which is a cancer of the eyes. In my case, it was bilateral, which means I had cancer in both eyes. Same as my sister. My dad had unilateral um, retinoblastoma, which means he only had cancer in one eye. In his case, he was diagnosed when he was five years old, which is a very late age to be diagnosed with that. Um, he carried the gene which passed on to my sister, who also had bilateral retinoblastoma, and she ended up losing one of her eyes because they just couldn't, they didn't know what it was at the time, and she ended up losing her one eye, but she's still doing fine. In my case, um, I was diagnosed at a very early age. They were able to catch it, and I was put in an experimental treatment where I was the only one in the test group that was able to take the treatment fine. The other two were, there was complications with one of them, and the last um, patient that was in the trial ended up dying. I believe I was put here for a reason, that God has a plan for me. So I thought I'd raise awareness on the disease that has affected my life, both negatively and positively. Now you may be asking what rhinoblastoma really is. Rhinoblastoma is a mutation in the gene controlling cell division. The mutation causes cells to grow uncontrollably and causes them to become cancerous. There is still a 50-50 chance of a child being born with it where a family member has had it in the past. Most diagnosed cases are around first or second year of age. Yes, there's a 50-50 chance that any children I have will also have retinoblastoma. So that is something in the future that I will have to discuss with my future spouse that if we are going to actually have children, we're going to see a genetics doctor to see if there's anything we can do to prevent it or if we will just adopt. Um, it's something that I still have to, I'm still thinking about and if I have a future spouse that's something we will have to discuss. And unfortunately I was not the only child born to my family with the disease. My older sister Andrea was also born with the disease. Hi, my name is Andrea Weed. I'm 23 years old and I'm a certified teacher and cancer survivor. Well, in school I didn't think that I'd be able to play sports, but when I got the chance to join a team, I joined soccer and played co-ed soccer throughout um, grade school into ninth grade. And then I also played basketball for close to 10 years, and I played that into high school. And I'm also able to drive a car, which most people would not think that I'd be able to do with one eye, but I can. Well, I did not think that I'd be able to drive very well, but um, I learned some tricks and tips from my dad because he also has retinoblastoma and drives as well. So I make sure to use all of my mirrors at all times. And I also need to um, turn my head more than the regular driver would, I guess. I have to check for more blind spots since I can't see it all from this side over. So I completely turn my head for um, merging and to change lanes and things like that. And as stated before, the disease stems from someone in the family who was born with the disease. My father was born with the disease and treatment at the time was very limited. He also lost his eye. I'm Jim Weed. I'm a quality assurance consultant and I am a retinoblastoma survivor. Now, some of the things that most people would think if you have one eye that you couldn't do is drive a car, for one thing. Um, playing sports. Um, I pitched growing up, uh, played basketball. Um, played basically was not limited in any way, shape, or form. I never had any limitations put in front of me from my parents. I did anything that I could feel comfortable doing. Um, I never requested any of that. I know I probably could have, but I really didn't need any kind of special arrangements as far as sitting. Um, although you could have asked for that if that was depending on how much, um, if you have bilateral, you may have more damage in your good eye. 
um, you know, that uh, in unilateral I had nothing wrong with my, with my left eye. So um, vision was not an issue as far as being able to see the board or anything of that sort. Um, kids are kids. Uh, you know, everybody's different. Everybody has a, a bit of a handicap, whether it's a physical handicap, a mental handicap, or just a, a handicap in growing up to, to being different than someone else. So kids will be, can be cruel. Um, I was no exception to that, but it just made you stronger and prepared you for um, things to come later in life. So I look at it as all good. My dad and sister have served as role models for me. Since they were both born with the same disease as me, I kind of look up to them. Seeing how they were able to deal with losing an eye, I find myself very fortunate. Fortunately, cancer only took my dad and my sister's eye, so I'm thankful that that's all it took. Um, it has changed our lives, but we don't let it affect our lives. My dad and my sister are still able to do regular things that people are able to do. They're still able to drive cars. <clears throat> They're still able to play sports. Even act famous actors have also been, who have been diagnosed with frontoblastoma and such, have also gone on with their careers and not let it affect them. A famous one is Peter Folk. He's one of he's had an artificial eye. Well, he's made a career in Hollywood, so he doesn't let it affect him in any way. So how can I? I'm just gonna keep going on. I'm not gonna stop aspiring for my dreams. I'm a filmmaker, so I'm not gonna let it slow me down. I'm not gonna put any limitations on myself. I'm not gonna. It's not gonna stop me from doing anything. They never let their condition hamper them in their in achieving their goals and I'm not allowing it to hamper mine.